Dear friends, welcome to my bedside. I know it's a little weird, but I want you to take a look what my bedside actually looks like, okay? Yeah, do you notice something? I got a bunch of friends that I have beside me near my bed. It's been a practice of mine, a lifelong practice really, before I go to bed to try to have a conversation. I see reading books as a way of having a conversation with someone that I want to speak to that I don't have a chance to speak with. But they can pass on their lessons through words, through their books. And that's why I've had this lifelong habit of reading before bedtime. And I think it's made a profound difference in my journey. Today, I was writing a letter to myself, which I call letter Z, which I also share with you. If you're not yet on the letter Z mailing list, please make sure you subscribe. The link is below. But I was writing about doubt. Doubt as the destroyer of our life, of our liveliness. I was thinking about my own work and some of the projects that I'm involved in. And, you know, I have this tendency to try to connect all the dots, to try to really rationally plan and create the perfect vision for, for any particular project that I'm involved in. And there are days when I just don't feel like things are going according to my perfect vision. <laughs> I mean, when are things ever going perfectly, right? And then I thought about how in those moments, the emotion of doubt creeps up and how I suddenly take my foot off the gas. Have you ever experienced that? How you suddenly not only take your foot off the gas, but sometimes you even never put it back on the gas at all, or you might even pull up your handbrake. And so sometimes you don't even quit the project. Sometimes you're involved in all of these things. It could even be your day job where you're no longer feeling it. You're doubtful. Hey, in that case, your doubt might be telling you something very important that you really need to take a look at your present occupation and consider making a change. But the context in which I was thinking about doubt is for those of us who are moving toward the things we want, who are involved in projects that we want to be doing. And how doubt suddenly becomes the handbrake that slows down our progress, that sabotages us. And I thought about how doubt is an emotion and how we cannot make something that matters to us subservient to an emotion. Why? Because emotions change on a daily basis. Monday, I may feel excited about the project. Tuesday, I may be rethinking the project. Wednesday, I might be like, why am I even bothering to do this at all? Thursday, you might be like, no, no, let's do this. Let's do this. Friday, you're totally deflated because you haven't actually moved in any meaningful way on the project. And so then you make another promise to yourself that Monday, it will happen. Monday is when that change is going to happen. But if we're brutally honest with ourselves, usually what happens is that this cycle of this up and down rodeo where emotions dictate how much progress we make on the things that matter to us most is repeated week after week, week after week. So then I thought about, okay, what is the serious problem here? The serious problem here is doubt. Doubt is the thing that unnecessarily makes you take your foot off the gas or it makes you pull up the handbrake. So you're kind of in the game, but you're not really playing. You're kind of in the game, but you're not really playing to win. That's the key. You're not really moving forward decisively, okay? And decisiveness is the key word that I want to bring up here. Because how do you kill doubt? Doubt, which essentially is useless, if you think about it, Doubt is only useful if you're about to do something stupid. It is there to protect you. But in most other cases where you've thought about your calling, where you believe there's something that you want to move on, 
and then you start moving on it, but maybe you don't get any fruit, maybe you don't get any reaction, and then the doubt starts creeping up. Well, the question is, what has stopped being true that was true when you decided to embark on this? Nothing. You still want to do this. It still matters to you. Just because you got a little doubt in your life doesn't mean that you need to break or stop the project, right? So I thought about, okay, how do you stop doubt? And I realized that the way to destroy doubt, which is absolutely useless, unless you're about to jump into an empty pool, but that's not what we're talking about. The way you stop doubt is with decision. That's it. Decision. Decide that you're going to commit to something or not commit to something. Decision is the act which removes doubt. And believe me, folks, a well-made decision will make you feel like you're flying. It will lighten your load, okay? It will make you feel clear. It will make you feel alive. And I'm talking about affirmative decisions, meaning I am moving forth, I am going forward with this project, or decisions that um, mean you're gonna stop doing something. In both cases, a well-made decision frees you up, okay? So anytime doubt comes up, remember, it is an emotion. And emotions change Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They change based on barometric pressure. They change based on what you ate. They change based on who you ran into this morning. They change based on how much you had to drink last night. They're totally in a flux and they're totally changing. And therefore, sometimes they are not aligned with objective reality. They're not aligned with truth. And therefore, you cannot use your emotions everywhere and always as a compass, as a good metric for you to decide whether you should be continuing with something or not. Those kind of decisions have to come from silent reflection about your past, to look at yourself honestly and brutally about the patterns that have worked for you in the past and the patterns that have not worked for you in the past, an accurate, real and honest assessment of where you are right now and the context within, you, which, within which you find yourself. And the more accurately you're able to do that, the more in tune you are with reality, okay? This requires silence and honest reflection, not frantic, chasing, running around, these gusts of inspiration that come and go like the wind. That's not what I'm talking about. So past patterns, what has worked, what has not worked, face that. Face the present. What circumstances do you find yourself in right now? And do you require a change? And if your soul is calling out for you to do something, could you spare 15 minutes a day in order to move in the smallest possible way on that particular project or the thing that is calling you. And then number three, nobody can tell the future, right? But if you're good at reading the patterns of your past and you've honestly and accurately assessed the context within you find yourself right now, I think that you can make some pretty good predictions about if I do step one, step two, step three, this is what it might possibly result in in the future. And those are the three things that basically you need to do before you make the decision. That's how you know your decision is going to be made well, okay? And then once you make that decision, you just move forward. You just move forward, okay? There is nothing that doubt can help you figure out. There is nothing that doubt can help you figure out. And if it's knocking on your door and it's trying to make itself heard, set 10 minutes aside and write down in your journal, doubt, what are you trying to say to me? And most likely you will see, my friends, that doubt is just trying to protect you from various things that mostly have to do with the ego. 
and none of them are good reasons not to proceed or maybe to quit a certain project that you initially felt you want to be a part of. That is the insid insidious and very dangerous mechanism that happens within us, okay? It comes disguised as, I want to do this right, so I need to enroll in another course. I want to do this right because it's so important to me, so I need to buy the perfect camera. I need better lighting. Look at me, friends. I'm sitting on the side of my bed in my bedroom showing you my bedside, okay? I don't even have a proper light, whatever. But I believe what matters most here is that I actually record this video and share it with you, and hopefully it will be helpful to you. But continuing on that thought where doubt comes to you, it comes to you masquerading as a good, when in fact, it's not. What it's masking is laziness. What it's masking is your ego. What it's masking is your fear of putting yourself out there and maybe doing something that's close to your heart. It's totally understandable because if it's close to your heart, it makes you vulnerable, right? But friends, a liveliness, living your life fully means being vulnerable, right? Being sheltered from all kinds of risk, from all kinds of emotions is not living your life fully. So each of us has a life detector inside, folks, and this life detector will ping you once in a while when it feels that you're not living your life fully. You can call it your conscience, you can call it your soul, you can call it whatever you want, but each of you is born with a built-in life detector. And this life detector, its only role is to go, hey, knock, knock, are we alive? I know our heart is beating, I know we have a pulse, but are we truly alive, okay? And if you learn to recognize that ping from your life detector and to actually give it some attention, I think your life will change for the better. Because each of us, each of us is made to want to live a fully lived life. Not someone else's life, not running after, you know, the life of our hero or our favorite YouTuber, but our own life, okay? And when you decide to embark on living authentically, courageously, and speaking and doing exactly what's in your heart. Trust me, that is when the doubt is gonna be at its strongest, for whatever reason. I don't know how this works. Maybe it's the devil trying to distract you from living your life, and instead, he wants you to tap into the desires of the machine, to distract yourself with your social media feeds, and toys and possessions, whatever. Those things don't make you alive. You already know that. So folks, it is when you decide to live your authentic life, it is when you decide to live fully and be full of a liveliness that doubt is going to appear to you uh, in its strongest form. And it is knowing how to deal with this doubt that is going to be one of the most important arts arts of living fully. One of the most important skills that you're going to have to learn, and there's no other way to learn than by doing. So next time doubts come up, remember, we do not make what is most important to us serve our emotions because our emotions change. So the doubt can be there, it can disappear, but doubt will not be the director of our life, right? When doubt appears, you want to spend some time and then make a decision. If you've already made the decision in the past and the doubt appears, I want you to reaffirm the decision. Open your journal and write down, I have already decided that I'm gonna record this album. I have already decided that I'm, going, uh, that I'm gonna join this clay pottery class. I already decided that I'm gonna go on this silent retreat so that I can start organizing my thoughts about a book I am about to write this year, okay? That's how you dispel doubt. You dispel it with a decision. Decision and then movement. You move forward. How do you move forward? With faith. You cannot move forward in confidence. Maybe there's nothing to be confident about yet. And that's not realistic, right? Confidence will come in time from fruit and from the momentum you have 
built by taking the small steps. That's what's going to give you confidence. And the more confidence you have, the easier it will be to deal with doubt. But you cannot remove doubt with doubt. You cannot remove doubt with inaction. The only way to dispel doubt is decision and movement. Movement, forward, and faith. Faith and humility. Okay? Humility is not you know, not publishing your stuff. Humility is not shying away from living your true life and saying, no, no, I shouldn't self-promote myself. I shouldn't say what I really feel. Why were you born? You were born to be a voice in this choir. This choir called life needs your authentic, unique voice to speak up. You are here for a reason, right? And so humility is actually Taking the risk to publish, taking the risk to record this video, taking the risk to share your feelings and your story. That is true humility. Humility is not shying away from it. That is false humility. And you don't want to do that. So folks, again, the only way to dispel doubt is to number one, realize that doubt is an emotion. It will come and go. It cannot be the director of our life and our dreams. Number two, you got to make a decision. Okay. Decision based on patterns of the past, the context within you find yourself right now, and your best reasonable assumption about what will happen in the future if you decide to take step one, two, three. Then make that decision. And then pick the smallest possible step that you can actually uh, do to move forward on this. Okay, And that is the only way that I know to dispel doubt in your life. I hope this video has been helpful. If you're not on my email list, which I call Z Letter, letters that I write to myself and then send to you, the link is below. I'll see you in the next video.